Live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. We are continuing to follow an ongoing situation on the northwest side of the city. A barricaded suspect in an apartment in the 6700 block of Chase Hill, just west of the shops of La Cantera. We first told you about the standoff on the news at 5. San Antonio police descended on the Chase Apartments, a nearby school put on lockdown. Police remaining tight-lipped about the details until the situation at the Chase Hill Apartments is resolved. Meantime, Patty Santos is live with more on what she is seeing. Yeah, this has been going on for the last three hours and even more police officers have been arriving here at the scene. We can tell you in the last hour, we did see the hostage negotiations team and a SWAT vehicle arrive, which means it could be a while before this scene settles down. This started right around the time when school was releasing students, so there was changes for parents at Monroe May Elementary School who were picking up their kids. Now, we also want to tell you that people who live in the Chase Hill apartments and also apartments across the street and next door, they are not being allowed into their apartments. People are being allowed to walk out, but they are not being allowed to walk back in. We're going to stay here on the scene and bring you the latest developments on ksat.com and also tonight on the night beat. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Patty. Six years in prison. That's the jury's decision for a woman who, while driving drunk, killed another driver and seriously injured four of his passengers. As Paul Venema reports, the jury verdict did not come without courtroom controversy. Just before noon, the wait for the verdict was over. On Wednesday, the jury found Rosalinda Olalde guilty of intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault. The punishment on the manslaughter charge. We assess our punishment at the confinement at the in the institutional division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for a term of six years. On the four counts of intoxication assault, the jury set punishment at four years on each count to run concurrently with the six year term for manslaughter. The lengthy jury deliberations here, eight hours over two days, was not without controversy. That was addressed during a bench conference just before the verdict was returned. Olalde's attorney told the judge that a juror had stepped into the hallway from the jury room crying and had spoken with the bailiff. That, to a degree, uh, depending on the magnitude and, and what is stated, uh, can be a grounds for interference with the jury deliberation. The bailiff said the discussion did not include any mention of the case. And she just says, this is, I can't do this, and I don't know what she was talking about. And I just told her to calm down, you know, I know that it's hot in there, or whatever. And um, that's all she told me. Duarte's motion uh, for a mistrial denied. Olalde was driving drunk on that August night when she crashed broadside into a car, killing 22-year-old Mario Velasquez Palau and seriously injuring four passengers in his car. Two of those passengers and Palau's sister addressed Olalde briefly following the verdict. They told of their pain and heartbreak. Olalde will have to serve one half of that six-year sentence day for day before she's eligible for parole. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, jury selection began today in the capital murder trial of accused cop killer Otis McCain. The state is seeking the death penalty in the case. Because of that, jury selection is expected to last for at least a month since each juror in a death penalty case must be interviewed individually. Today, 200 prospective jurors were given questionnaires to complete prior to individual interviews. Once the jury panel is selected, Testimony in the trial set to begin on April 27th. McCain is accused in the execution style shooting of veteran SAPD detective Ben Marconi back in 2017. Marconi was shot as he sat in his patrol car outside of police headquarters. San Antonio police making an arrest in a murder case that dates back years. 41-year-old Francisco Rangel charged with murder in connection with the stabbing death of then 18-year-old Joseph Johnson. It happened back in 1996 on West Mistletoe Avenue. Detectives working the case say that they realized that they missed talking to some potential witnesses back then. They went to Florida to speak to one witness, and that witness and another named Rangel as the suspect. A big headache for several people in a Southside neighborhood brought on by car burglaries. They got into about a dozen cars and trucks in a subdivision near Southton Road and Interstate 37. Katrina Weber tells us why police say that the victims may have given the crooks an open invitation to steal. 
The trail of a group of overnight thieves was mapped out this morning by patrol cars in the Southside neighborhood. Everywhere police stopped, crooks had been earlier. They looked around, I mean, they shuffled everything out and they left, I guess, because there's nothing in here to take. Even though she fared better than some of her neighbors on Stetson View, Mary Stein Cruz says she still felt violated. Others lost clothing, wallets, stereo equipment, and keys from their cars. They hit the whole neighborhood, basically. According to police, there were 10 victims and counting on three different streets. Thieves got into about the same number of cars here just last week. This time, it hit Edineo Espinosa especially hard. $47,000. They took his entire truck. My wallet was there too, so I got to call my credits and... I don't have no driver license anymore. He says he got home around 11 last night and never heard a thing or saw any broken glass. Another neighbor reported seeing a group of suspicious men in a car. Others believe they caught them in action on surveillance cameras. Police say in just about every one of these cases, the car owners left their doors unlocked. They say the easiest way to keep out criminals is to lock them. For now on, definitely double check and triple check. Mary Stein Cruz plans to be extra careful about that. She also hopes her neighbors, as well as police, will be more watchful. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The effort to keep pre-K for SA going in San Antonio is already underway. The first order of business, getting people on board with keeping the one-eighth sales tax that pays for it. The Keep Pre-K SA campaign launching today with the goal to build support for reauthorization of that sales tax, which will be on the ballot on May 2nd. The early education program serves 2,000 kids in four education centers in the city. By the end of the eighth year, officials say more than 25,000 kids will have been impacted. Impact campaign organizers say is undeniable. Well, it's important because it's opportunity, right? You're making sure that as many kids in our community as possible have an opportunity to go to pre-K, which is the closest thing to an educational equalizer there is. Every study shows, all the research shows that full day high quality pre-K produces the best educational outcomes all the way through graduation and beyond. Spring break could very well feel the impact of the concerns over the coronavirus. The city's main attractions like SeaWorld, the San Antonio Zoo, are trying to reassure visitors that they have health and safety protocols in effect, yet many have already decided to avoid crowds. But not everyone, as we saw today on the San Antonio Riverwalk. Quite a few people were still out and about enjoying the sights and the great weather. Many were here for events that were planned well ahead of the current outbreak. The sponsor of the Bernie High School Chamber Singers says it didn't change their plans to sing the national anthem at the UIL Girls Basketball Tournament. I think that the officials are doing a good job of containing it and doing the things that they need to do. And we've got people that have really bad flu more than we've got people with the virus. So. Her students who indicated their parents were not concerned are still aware of the necessary precautions like hand washing to lessen any risk to their health. We want to take a look outside with time saver traffic. This is I-35 at uh, moving northbound at Loop 410, and you can see a lot of traffic on this Friday evening. Normally it's a little cleared up a bit, but not tonight. Again, I-35 at Loop 410 headed northbound. Looks like it is crawling along. Today marking the anniversary of the final day of the Battle of the Alamo to honor those who died back in 1836. The San Antonio Living History Association put on the Dawn at the Alamo ceremony. Eric Hernandez tells us why history buffs think it's important to remember this famous battle. Shots fired in honor of the estimated 189 men who died in the Battle of the Alamo that ended March 6, 1836. The San Antonio Living History Association continues to remember those fallen men with its dawn at the Alamo event with a ceremony. Well, history is history. You can't change it, it good and the bad of it. Some people try to take away the bad of it and just leave the good, but it's all history. It all. You know, it's all part of our heritage. The ceremony included songs by a local high school choir, reenactments, and moments of silence. Texas history buff Jason Lippert drove from Fort Worth for the ceremony, calling it a one-of-a-kind experience. Chills down your back of your neck. It's just, it's awesome. 
Can't repeat it. Living history interpreter Ron Moulton says you can't forget those men who died and fought in the Alamo because he believes they gave us so much. Those men, you know, uh, fought for all their worth, gave it their all, so we could be standing here talking to each other today. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. A great day for that Living History Association to put on the event and a great day as well to head out to the National Shooting Complex. Adam Kasky has been out there all day shooting some clay with a decent percentage. Hopefully we have better chances for rain in the forecast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if our rain chances were my shooting percentage, we'd be in a deeper drought here, okay? And <laughs> we'll give it another shot here in a little bit, but we were raining some clay earlier. We were, we had some success, and some of the folks with the Shriner University shooting team are out here today. They're getting ready for the uh, national competition. We're gonna be back to tell you what we were doing out here today. It was for a very good cause, and of course, I'll be back with your full weekend forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Adam. All right, the playoff picture may be bleak for the San Antonio Spurs, but we do have playoff basketball in the Alamo City tonight. We have a look at who's facing off in the Alamo Dome, still to come in sports. Our demographic that we cater to often come from low income or um, they just don't have the means to really put themselves through school. How two women found a niche to address the nursing shortage. Jeff's coming up next at 6. But first, around Texas, the city of Austin pulling the plug on South by Southwest amid concerns over the coronavirus. The Arts and Technology Festival was set to kick off next week. The mayor of Austin today announcing a local disaster as a precaution. No one in the capital has been found to have the COVID-19 virus, but South by Southwest as expected to draw a few hundred people from around the world, and local officials decided the threat of the contagion was serious enough to cancel the event. Facebook, Netflix, and a number of other big tech companies announced this week that they would not be attending because of the coronavirus. This is the first time in 34 years South by Southwest has been called off. UT also also canceling, uh, canceling rather a big campus event called Explore UT for 50,000 teachers, prospective college students, and their parents. It was scheduled for tomorrow. It's canceled. It is the same almost everywhere you go in the country. There just aren't enough nurses to go around. But two smart women are teaming up to take that shortage down by training more nursing assistants. Star Keisha Pearson didn't think this would ever be her career. Me and my husband, we didn't have the money to to send me through school. But thanks to an enterprising pair of best friends, today she's a certified nursing assistant with the badge to prove it. Just being able to change lives of others, that, that is a big key in my heart. <laughs> Two years ago, Jacqueline and her friend Alyssa Durant built their nursing assistant training center and offered the Learn to Earn program. They turned to employers to subsidize student training. The long-term care industry is really suffering from a great shortage. These programs provide low-income people with an education never before available to them, an education that also leads to better jobs. It feels so good to know that we've touched so many lives and families we made mistakes all business owners I don't care who you are I don't care if you are um, an owner of an NFL team you make mistakes you make financial mistakes um, but it's all on how you bounce back CNA training courses like learn to earn are prospering it's estimated the vocation will grow by at least 10 percent in the next nine years salaries start at 23,000 but can go as high as $34,000 now the training program runs about eight weeks long and students can work at the same time that they're going to school. And if they become registered nurses later on, salaries can exceed $63,000. All right, 616, 67 degrees. It's been beautiful for the past few yeah, days. But you notice there's a lot of clouds out now yeah. and uh, Adam Kasky can blame low visibility perhaps on his shooting percentage today at the national <laughs> complex windage it's the wind okay it's really whipping around our shots right guys right yeah. 
Right? <laughs> right. All right, we'll give this one a shot, then we'll jump into your forecast. All right, let that go. All right, pull. I'm gonna redeem myself at the end of this, all right? All right, so we're here today because we're part of a great charity event for the Texas DPS Foundation, which is a, a charity organization that supports the families of DPS troopers, especially the families of the fallen DPS troopers with financial assistance and even some scholarships as well. So today was their third annual sporting clay shoot. Over a hundred folks out here shooting and it's some great corporate sponsors as well and it all went to a good cause And so we're still out here, but let's chat about the weather. Okay, and today our high temperature was actually 72 degrees That's where we made it this afternoon. It was comfortable lovely day at 72 in the morning low of 47 uh, Was actually a little below average for this time of year now take a look at the highs across the state you get into North Texas we we're in the 60s you get down into the valley and we were right near 80 degrees for the high temperature. And you know, I do see an overall warming trend coming uh, in the days ahead. All right, temperatures right now generally in the 60s and some 70s still remaining out there. You look at the wind speeds and it's pretty gusty. Pretty gusty wind. <laughs> okay, no, it's a light wind, very light breeze out there generally out of the east northeast at about five to ten miles per hour now i do want to go full screen and take a look at the satellite and radar to show you what's coming our way and what it is is basically just some cloud cover we have these you know th this veil of cirrus clouds that's been rolling overhead today but they're starting to thicken up now at sunset and as our future cast shows we'll continue to see those streaming overhead and really thicken up so we actually think we'll see a little more gray in the sky than blue in the coming days and you know i have to tell you um the humidity is going to return as well and with this cloud cover unfortunately i don't foresee a whole lot of rain not a lot of rain chances with it just that moisture coming off the pacific but it's not going to translate to a whole lot of uh, really much falling from those clouds all right let's take a look at the planning forecast for early tomorrow morning check this out 49 in san antonio 57 as you get down to laredo that's going to be the warm spot otherwise we're generally right around 50 degrees in the morning and even some low to mid 40s in the hill country by the afternoon a little bit cooler than what we had today actually because of the added clouds that'll be rolling overhead. I think we'll be about 73 in Catula, 66 New Braunfels, and 68 in Castroville. San Antonio about 67. So this evening, a gentle breeze, comfortable. Temperatures making it down to 58 at 10 p.m. At midnight will be 54. And then tomorrow we'll start the day at 49 and make it up to 67 with you know, low clouds to start the day and then some sunshine into the afternoon. And looking at the seven day forecast, we actually do get back to the 80 degree mark as we get into the middle part of next week. But you look at those rain chances and we're looking at 10, 20% shots. I mean, Sunday, maybe a brief sprinkle in the morning here or there. Then we get into Monday, a few isolated showers. Same thing again later in the week, but we're not looking at anything really widespread or anything meaningful, um, unfortunately. All right, you know, we do actually have a, another event that's going on here that we happen to stumble upon, and it happens to be a barbecue cook-off. So you know where you can find us coming up at 6.30. You know where we're going to be. In the meantime, oh. well, all right, now we're done, okay? Now we're done, and we're going to go to the barbecue cook-off. We'll see you at 6.30. I'd say lucky shot, but that looked pretty good, Adam. <laughs> Look very professional. All right, Larry, I am torn. The Spurs, which I've grown to love, are going to be in my hometown of Brooklyn, New York tonight. Okay. All eyes on Jadonte Murray. And that means you have to pull for the Spurs, yeah, though, because yeah. you live in San Antonio. <laughs> Spurs at the Nets tonight. And I'll tell you what, Dejounte Murray is having a great season, in particular, most recently following the rodeo road trip. And in high school basketball, Fredericksburg Batlin Billy stood toe to toe with one of the best in the state. Coming up. 
We start at the Alamo Dome with the Class 4A state semifinals between the Fredericksburg Batland Billies and the Argyle Lady Eagles. First quarter, Ella Hartman makes a three-pointer and the Batland Billies lead 3-2. They trailed 8-7 after one. Second quarter, Katie Huff with a jumper for the Batland Billies who lead 13-10. Then Ella Hartman for a triple again and Fredericksburg goes up 21-17 with 140 left. Their biggest lead, but Argyle would end the half with a 7-0 run tied at 21. Brooklyn call for three. They had a 24-21 and a half time it would never trail again. Argyle defeats Fredericksburg 49-38. After the game, I was looking at all the girls and I was like, and they were hugging and crying and I was just like, it's okay because y'all be back here next year. <sighs> and I know y'all will win next time. We were in the quarterfinals for the last five years and just getting beat by that much and this was the team that finally just, it, it, it rose our program to the next level and there's no looking back. The defending Class 6A state champion Judson Rockets will face Duncanville in the 6A semifinals tonight. Judson beat Austin West Lake in the regional final Saturday 50 to 47. A tight win that can only help the Lady Rockets should they face another close contest. Senior Tiana Huggins had this message for the Rockets underclassmen. Um, just constantly reminding them to keep pushing through because games like that, they're really fast paced and they just have to remember that um, like the games are just going to be going, so they can't like look back and say like they didn't give their all. So it's very exciting. Uh, not too many teams get to do this, and we're you know we're grateful to have this chance again. So we're going to go for it a second time in a row. Duncanville and Judson will face off tonight. Tip is scheduled for 8.30 at the Alamo Dome. Last night in the Class 5A state semifinals, San Antonio Veterans Memorial held off Mansfield Timber U 45-44. Senior and Texas A&M commit Sahara Jones led the Patriots with 18 points. Raina Williams scored the final basket of the game, putting the Patriots up 45-44 with 26 seconds left in regulation. They've won their last three games by a combined six points and will now play for a state title. I got really jittery because I didn't want us to lose. I wanted us to get to the basket, and then the rest were not going our way. So it was just, you got to focus and put the ball in the hole no matter what happens. These girls, I'm just telling you, they're, I mean, they've been in the situation. And so, we, I mean, we just kept telling them, too. We still had a lot of time, and thank God they, they did it. SA Veterans Memorial will play Frisco Liberty Saturday, 3 p.m. for the Class 5A State Championship at the Alamo Dome. In NBA action, the Spurs will play at the Brooklyn Nets tonight. San Antonio is 11-20 on the road this season, while Brooklyn is 16-14 at home. Spurs guard DeJounte Murray is playing good basketball and seems to have turned a corner after the All-Star break. He's playing some of the best ball of the season. So the Spurs will play the Nets tonight at 6.30. LaMarcus Aldridge is out with a right shoulder strain. Marco Bellinelli out due to illness. And Yaka Pertl, of course, is out with a right MCL sprain. San Antonio FC will kick off the 2020 USL Championship season tomorrow night at home with the defending champion Real Monarchs SLC after a grueling preseason that saw them play two MLS squads and three USL Championship teams. SAFC is ready to start the season. We're really excited to, to play the champs at home the first game. I think uh, we wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, we're really looking forward to the challenge. Um, hopefully it'll be, be a good show for the fans. We want to put our best foot forward. We want to be exciting. Uh, we want to play with intensity. And we want to put on a good show for our fans. Kick us tomorrow, 7.30 at Toyota Field. You can enjoy dollar drinks and post-game fireworks. Can't right. beat that. Yep. Thank you, Larry. You got it. We'll be right back. This morning, President Donald Trump signed off on new funding to fight the coronavirus in the United States. Then he visited the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta. This as the number of global cases climbs past a landmark number. Karen Kafa reports from Washington on the efforts to curb the outbreak around the country and around the globe. As the count of confirmed cases pushed past 100,000 worldwide Friday, President Trump signed off on more than $8 billion in funding to fight the coronavirus, while more states such as Maryland and Pennsylvania report their first cases. Cities have been taking their own precautions, like the postponement of two major international music festivals in Miami. We're emphasizing the public that this decision is not a cause for alarm or panic, but rather that we are doing it 
in an abundance of caution. And San Francisco has launched a new coronavirus text alert system as the Grand Princess cruise ship remained off the shore of the city while passengers were tested. We're due to go home on Saturday, but obviously we don't know whether we're going to be quarantined for two weeks or, or what's happening. Outside the U.S., a meeting of EU ambassadors in Brussels was canceled when a second European Council staffer tested positive for the virus. In northern Italy, Catholic masses suspended in the hardest hit regions. And amid a steep drop in demand for oil, particularly in China where the coronavirus originated, OPEC countries and allies debated supply cuts to prop up prices. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. News around Texas. It could take a year or more to develop a viable coronavirus vaccine, and a Houston area medical center is looking for funding to add its work to the effort. Bear, Baylor College of Medicine says it started to develop a vaccine after the SARS outbreak that could help with COVID-19. They began the work in the early 2000s inside the Center for Vaccine Development at Texas Children's Hospital. In 2016, though, they ran out of money. They ended up storing the vaccine in progress in the freezer. And researchers say with the right funding, they could test the vaccine to see if it's effective against COVID-19. So this could be the answer. I think what, what we would like is to have someone give us the opportunity to test if it's the out. answer. If it stays in our freezer, we will never know if it was the answer. While these doctors say they may have a head start, this won't be a quick fix. Getting an answer could take between nine months to a year. It's a talk some parents feel uncomfortable bringing up and children don't like to hear, but it is important. Child Safe is once again kicking off their Cardboard Kids campaign across Bear County. Alicia Barrera breaks down how a cardboard art piece can take the pressure off of both kids and parents when talking about child abuse. Child abuse. It's a crime that knows no gender, no economic background or race. A lot of child sexual abuse happens in secret and it happens in a scenario where a child doesn't feel like they can either tell somebody what's happening or they can say no to the person who is um, performing the act. Cardboard Kids is more than an art activity. They're designed to help kids understand what their bodies do and who can or cannot touch their body parts. There is no too young. When we are teaching our children about their body parts, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, we should also be teaching them about all of their body parts. Experts say teaching the anatomically correct names is key to avoid any confusion when the child does have the courage to make an outcry. It's only one in 10 children ever make an outcry of sexual abuse. And so within our community last year in 2019, we had 5,373 confirmed cases, but that means that something was recognized or something was sad. But if the statistic of one in 10 kids reporting their abuse is true, that means many cases have fallen through the cracks. That's why cardboard kids, if approached correctly, can play an important role in a child's well-being. Sometimes we have good touches, like when I give you a hug, that may be a good touch. Sometimes there are bad touches where somebody hits us and that hurts. So while decorating is fun and I love seeing all of the cute cardboard kids, I really, really want to challenge parents, teachers to have these conversations while they're decorating and don't just make it an art activity. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. We have a lot more information on how to tackle this tough conversation on our website, ksat.com. We also have where and when you can find the cardboard kids. Just click on this story. He's known to us as Sebastian, ladies and gentlemen, the Grand Marshal of the Fiesta Flambo, Sebastian. Fiesta is just over a month away and one of the biggest parades in the country, Fiesta Flambeau, has its Grand Marshal for 2020. There he is, Mexican sculptor Sebastian. If you don't know his name, you probably have seen his work all around the Alamo City. He created the Torch of Friendship statue that sits in downtown San Antonio. We've also learned who the honorary Grand Marshal will be. Will be. It is singer Allie Brook, formerly of the group Fifth Harmony. Fiesta Flambeau is the largest illuminated night parade in the nation. About 700,000 people show up to see it in person. Another 1.5 million watch it on TV. Tourist flights to the International Space Station could be ready to go sooner than you think when SpaceX says those flights could be launching still to come. And whether you're ready or not, we are springing forward this weekend. How tinkering with your time also messes with your body clock. Next at 6.
Fall back and spring forward. This weekend, many of us will be adjusting our body clocks and getting one less hour of sleep. Marilyn Moritz with a look at how tinkering with time affects your body. On Sunday at 2 a.m., the time will advance instantly, but it will take longer for our body clocks to adjust. Losing one hour may not seem like much, but that small change can be a big deal for your health. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, many people aren't getting enough sleep to begin with, so the additional sleep shortage can lead to deadly consequences. The Monday after the time shift is linked to an increase in car accidents. That's according to a Stanford University study, which looked at two decades decades of data. Also, adults who miss out on even one hour of sleep a day are more likely to report health problems like diabetes, depression, and heart disease. That's compared to those who get seven or eight hours of sleep. The experts suggest you use the time change to reset your sleep habits to make sure you get enough rest. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. We are ending a work week and about to start our weekend but for adam kasky he kind of started it a few hours ago i think he's chowing down on some barbecue if he's lucky yeah he stopped shooting clay and decided to pick up a fork adam what's going on <laughs> it's it's we've definitely changed tunes here right it's perfect you're shooting clays eating, feasting on barbecue. We happened to stumble upon this barbecue cook-off competition for Texas Trophy Hunters Association that's uh, out here basically on the grounds of the National Shooting Complex. We're gonna chat with some folks, take a look at what they're cooking up, have some good old fun and get you ready for the weekend weather-wise coming up. Welcome back. Taking a vacation on the International Space Station. Sounds amazing, but it could start happening next year. SpaceX has signed a deal with startup Axiom Space to take tourists, private researchers, and other individuals to the orbiting laboratory. The mission will use the Crew Dragon spacecraft, which can fit three passengers and a trained flight commander. Pretty cool. Once the Crew Dragon attaches to the space station, passengers could spend at least eight days there before then coming back down to Earth. How much is all this going to cost? Well, we don't know yet, but previous tourism missions to the station have cost tens of millions of dollars. The company says the first mission could happen as soon as the second half of 2021. All right, get your wallets ready. Sunday marks the six year anniversary of the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 over the Indian Ocean. The flight's fate has proven to be one of the world's biggest aviation mysteries. The plane vanished on March 8, 2014 on the way from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. 239 people were on board. The official search for the MH370 carried out by Malaysia, China and Australia called off in January 2017. About $150 million was spent on this effort. A second search carried out by U.S.-based company Ocean Infinity ended in 2018 after a fruitless 90-day sweep of the southern Indian Ocean. The company says it did cover more than 43,000 square miles of the ocean floor and found nothing. Whether you dunk, twist, or eat them whole right out of the package like I do, today we celebrate America's favorite cookie. It's National Oreo Cookie Day. The Oreo was invented by food scientist Sam J. Porcello for what is now Nabisco all the way back in 1912. They were initially sold as the Oreo Biscuit, but then the name was changed to Oreo Cookie and then Oreo Sandwich Cookie. The first one sold for 25 cents a pound pound more than 450 billion oreos have been sold around the world since then in the past several years nabisco's tinkered with it that you dip it in fudge you've got the double stuff i like the dipped in fudge fried ones. oreos too and you can fry them yeah. you're right <laughs> uh they've changed the flavors and while we know a lot about the history of the oreo we don't know where national oreo cookie day comes from is that today must be today <laughs> it is oh i'm supposed to swipe sorry i'm sorry all right well we have In Case You Missed It coming up next. After we check in with Adam Kasky, who's probably chowing down on some Oreos after eating some barbecue. Adam, what's going on out there? Oh yeah, so this is a great, this is uh, their 10th year of doing this barbecue competition, barbecue cook-off, and we just happened to stumble upon it, so. 
who are we to pass right by? <laughs> am I right or am I right? So we came to check in and chat with some folks and we did actually, you know, stumble upon a uh, first place brisket team over here with blackjack barbecue. So we'll go take a look at their pit and uh, scope out what they're doing here in a second. But let's chat about the weather, all right? It's actually getting a little chilly. I'm in short sleeves now that the sun's down, feeling a little bit of a chill in the air until I st you stand next to one of the pits, then I feel just fine. So right now at the airport, we're at 67 degrees. Dew point still in the 20s. Relative humidity still in the 20s well, 23%, I should say. So dry air is still in place. We will see a little increase in the humidity in the days ahead, but it's not gonna be the real sticky and uncomfortable kind of humidity. Look at the temperatures right now. Most of us are down in the 60s. We still have a few locations south and southwest of San Antonio hanging on to the 70s. But for the most part, we're down in the 60s and we'll see the temperatures falling through the 50s this evening. You'll feel that nice, crisp chill in the air that we often see this time of year. Look at those dew points, mostly in the 20s. That indicates the dry air that's in place. Sometimes it affects your skin. You get dry skin, chapped lips. And it doesn't help having dew points in the 20s. So right now across the state, there isn't a huge difference, so we're not looking at any big cold fronts headed our way or anything. And mostly in the 60s, down south, you know, we've got some temperatures in the 70s, so not a big difference across the, across the state. All right, let's get the wider view. Let's get a look at the big picture and go full screen here so you can really see it in detail. And we were talking temperatures, and there you have it. I mean, 61 in Amarillo to 77 in Laredo. That's the range of Texas temperatures. Look at the clouds. If you've been outside today and you're really looking up, up above us, you notice those thin clouds streaming overhead, but those thin clouds layered up and now they're, well, a little thicker. And we do think they're gonna play a role and continue to pu push in as we get into tomorrow. And our Futurecast is showing that. Satellite radar showed it coming in from Mexico. Futurecast indicates even really more cloud cover, especially for the first part of the day tomorrow. But don't expect that to lead to really much, if anything, in terms of rainfall, maybe a sprinkle, sprinkle at best. We're really just looking at a decent amount of clouds. And as we get into Sunday with a little influx of moisture, yeah, maybe a few sprinkles, that's it. Temperatures 67 tomorrow, near 70 on Sunday. And look at that, back to 80 degrees by the middle part of next week. But first we have to get through this evening. By 10 p.m., light, pretty much calm wind, 58 degrees, increasing clouds overnight. And we'll start the day tomorrow with temperatures mostly in the upper 40s to near 50, and then 67 later in the day. Rain chances 20% on Monday, then another 20 to 30% by Thursday and Friday of next week. And that's, that's really the best we can do other than a few morning little sprinkles and morning dampness here and there. All right, we're with the folks of Blackjack Barbecue here. We got these are brisket burgers, am I right? Burgers, yeah. Oh, look at the brisket burgers. Now, talking to them, they're gonna fire up their pit and put the briskets on probably around midnight tonight. So it's gonna be a late, long night, oh, getting man. everything going. Big. Putting on the ribs after that. Yes, sir. Now, y'all have placed first place, right? So yeah, what, was the, what was the key to first place brisket? Will you give it away? <laughs> it was Wagyu. Oh, I see. It was the cut of meat, uh-huh. It was Wagyu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, everybody say hi. Yeah. Hi. Have a good weekend. Good way to kick off your weekend. All right. Thanks so much, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> In case you missed it coming up next. Wagyu. <laughs> Here's today's In Case You Missed It. It is Friday, March 6th. After weeks of intense pressure, it's official. South by Southwest is canceled. About an hour ago, Austin officials declared a local disaster for the city of Austin over the coronavirus. And as part of that plan, the Arts and Music Festival, which was scheduled for later this month, had to be canceled. South by Southwest has been an annual event since the 80s. It draws in hundreds of millions of dollars each year for the Austin economy. Now, today's announcement comes just two days after 
Austin said the festival would go on as planned. Its cancellation raising questions on whether festivals here in San Antonio, like Fiesta, are still going to be moving forward. At last check, the Fiesta Commission said it was still on. A San Antonio youth pastor has been arrested for child sex crimes. 40-year-old Clayton Turner accused of inappropriately touching a 12-year-old girl and sexually assaulting her. He now faces a charge of aggravated sexual assault of a child. Over in Tennessee, President Trump visiting this afternoon to assess the damage from last weekend's tornadoes where 25 people were killed. Today, the president toured some of the hardest hit communities like Putnam County, where 18 of those deaths occurred. Now that all missing people have been accounted for, survivors say that the next step is rebuilding. A North Carolina woman celebrated her 100th birthday doing what she wanted, hanging out in a jail cell. Ruth Bryant says she's lived a century and has never been arrested. She wanted it off her bucket list and the police helped her out with that. Deputies showed up at her assisted living center and handcuffed her. She even pretended to resist arrest. God bless her <laughs> little heart. Thank you so much for joining us for the News at 6. We'll see you online at 9, and the night beat starts here at 10. Good night. Good night.